The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. <laughs> I said the exact same thing last time. <sighs> Why do I only say these things when I'm down on my luck? Ah, uh, so you noticed. <sighs> this isn't something I'm meant to discuss with ordinary people. But I suppose I can let you in on the secret. As you know, visions are external magical foci that only a small minority of people possess. They use these visions to channel elemental power. In truth, every wielder of a vision is one who can attain godhood and ascend to Celestia. We call such people Allogenes. Allogenes? Paimon's never heard of them before. <laughs> That's because this is a secret that only Archons are privy to. We don't need primitive tools like visions. Instead, each Archon has an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself, known as a Gnosis. <laughs> it's just a glowing glass ball I carry around to avoid suspicion. So who was that nasty woman who sent Paimon flying and stole your Gnosis? Her name is Signora, number eight of the Harbingers. She and the rest of the Harbingers have been given godlike executive authority by the Tsaritsa of Snejnaya, and with it, strength surpassing that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa of Snejnaya? Isn't that... Indeed. She is one of the seven. The Tsaritsa who reigns from her winter palace, and the one person that the Fatui Harbingers all answer to. The Seven don't always get along well, but still... I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see... A certain catastrophe happened 500 years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. But we can save discussion of the Cryo Archon and the Fatui for another day. If you seek the rest of the Seven, many difficulties lie ahead of you still. You should head for Mondstadt's neighboring nation of Liyue. The Geo Archon who reigns there, unlike me, administrates his entire region personally. He only descends once every year to give his divine predictions, which set the direction for Liyue for the rest of that year. Even so, it sounds like he works much harder than a certain someone, hmm? <laughs> In any case, this year's rite of dissension is soon to begin. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait another year. What? Oh, why didn't you tell us before? <sighs> well, then bye! We're going! One moment, Windborn Outlander. <laughs> Just use it gratefully. Or, better yet, treat me to a glass of dandelion wine. Traveler, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. The birds of Tavat, the songs in the cities, the Tsaritsa, her Fatui and the monsters, they are all part of your journey. The destination is not everything. So before you reach the end, keep your eyes open. Use the chance to take in the world around you. Great. So that's that for the Animal Archon's admonishments. Back to Venti time. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. That Fatui lady didn't hang around, did she? She just grabbed your Gnosis and left? She wanted to avoid any eyewitnesses from the Knights of Favonius. The slightest slip up here would have destroyed the Fatui's diplomatic relations with the Knights. So they're just gonna keep acting like Mondstadt's allies as if nothing happened? <sighs> if only the Seven Nations had banded together against the Abyss Order in the first place. The Fatui possess the strongest military among the Seven Nations, yet they've used it to steal the Holy Liar, covet the power of gods, and use Dvalin as a bargaining chip against the Knights. 
Speaking of the liar, didn't Diluc say something like this before? He said that the Fatui could only run amok across the Seven Nations and threaten the Knights because of the Harbingers. Yes. As I said earlier, the Cryo Archon has given them authority and strength beyond that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa... Oh, I haven't seen her in 500 years. What is she thinking? What's her plan? Oh, whatever the answer is, I have a feeling it's only going to make your search for the Seven all the more difficult. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Kaya shared some new intelligence, you say? Oh, I see. So, the Abyss Order has a princess who orchestrated the plan to corrupt Devalin? They were probably trying to turn Devalin into a weapon of war for the Abyss. But that said, I have never heard of any such princess of the Abyss Order. I think so too. Apparently. But how does a prince come out of nowhere and take command over the entire Abyss Order? If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. As I said before, vision wielders are known as allogenes and may ascend to Celestia. A gnosis is a higher order nexus of elemental manipulation and is emblematic of an archon's status as one of the seven. But as for which of the seven took your sister, I'm sorry, I don't know. Wait. As one of the seven, I'm not clear of suspicion yet either, am I? <laughs> We're a great team indeed. Say, once you find your sister, how would you like to become one of the new Four Winds? Hmm, you don't seem too into it. Hey, Tone Deaf Bard! If being one of the Four Winds means free food, you can consider Paimon! <laughs> If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Up till the end, Devalin remembered his duty as one of the Four Winds. As such, I don't intend to forcibly strip him of that duty and force my ideals of freedom onto him. I just hope that Devalin will be able to choose for himself and understand what freedom is. Before I became an Archon, I too was taught the meaning of freedom in this way by a friend. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard- Well then, best be off to Lele. If the dissension ritual you failed to tally, then another year you must dally. <laughs>